Hey everybody, it's your old pal again, CC Trubiac, and welcome back to CC's Vinyl Closet. Here is where I just love, 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 love listening to classic country music on vinyl record and then sharing the gospel in what I get out of it with you guys. And today, I have a bit of a new old discovery in the form of Charlie Rich. So, if discovering him along with me, or rediscovering him if you're an old fan, sounds like your kind of thing, don't waste any more time. Grab a comfy spot to sit for a spell, turn up that volume notch a few, and get ready to bask in the gospel of Charlie Rich. He was born Charles Allen Rich on December 14th, 1932, and he passed away at the age of 62 in 1995, and may he rest in sweet heavenly peace. Born in Arkansas to rural cotton farmers, Charlie graduated from Consolidated High School in Forest City, where he played saxophone in the band. Woop woop to all saxophone players. As I've discovered, he was strongly influenced by his parents, who were members of the landmark Missionary Baptist Church. His mother, Helen, played church piano, and his father sang in gospel quartets. How very interesting. Story goes, a black sharecropper on the family land named C.J. Allen taught Charlie blues piano, something that he would carry with him for the rest of his life. He studied music at the University of Arkansas. He'd leave after one semester to join the U.S. Air Force in 1953. He married in 1952, and while stationed in Enid, Oklahoma, he formed the Velvet Tones, playing jazz and blues and featuring his wife on vocals. When he left the military in 1956, he began performing in clubs around Memphis area, playing both jazz and rhythm and blues, and began writing his own material. He was a regular session musician for Sun Records, playing on a variety of artists over the years, including Johnny Cash. Over the years to come, Charlie Rich would become known for his blue-eyed soul music. In fact, his eclectic style of music over the years blended influences from rockabilly, jazz, blues, gospel, and country. And I'm glad to finally become more familiar with his work. And here at CC's Vinyl Closet, I have Charlie's 16th, count that, 16th studio album, Behind Closed Doors, released on Epic Records in 1973 and produced by the incomparable Billy Sherrill. It shouldn't be a surprise to me that in 1973, Charlie Rich was 41 years old. After all, I read that his nickname was The Silver Fox. I knew coming into it that I truly had no previous perceptions of Charlie Rich and his music. So this deep dive was truly surprising to me. What with all of Charlie Rich's background in jazz and blues, this particular album is classified as straight up country politan, a combination of slick pop and country stylized with the Billy Sherrill touch, which happened to include personal such as Pete Drake and Lloyd Green on steel guitar, Harold Bradley on guitar, and the Jordanaires and the Nashville edition providing those sweet background harmonies. On this record, there are a total of 11 tracks that I was able to listen to and enjoy, most falling under themes of romantic love and devotion. What's interesting is that by the time Charlie Rich had his first number one country hit with Behind Closed Doors, which I'll touch on shortly, he had already spent two decades recording for half a dozen other labels, flirting with rhythm and blues, rock and jazz. But it seems once Charlie Rich recorded and released his own form of lush pop country arrangements, he found worldwide acceptance. Let's consider the album's title song, Behind Closed Doors, which kicks this record off in proper style. This sensual love song was written by Kenny O'Dell, and as a single, it was Charlie's first number one hit on the country charts. And if you can even believe it, some radio stations banned it at the time for being racy but it caught on like wildfire for the Silver Fox. My baby makes me proud. Lord, don't she make me proud. She never makes a scene by hanging all over me in a crowd. Those people like to talk 
Lord, don't we love to talk? But when they turn out the lights, I know she'll be leaving with me. And when we get behind closed doors, then she lets her hair hang down. And she makes me glad that I'm a man. Oh, no one knows what goes on behind closed doors. Behind closed doors. In 1973, guys, Behind Closed Doors earned awards for Song of the Year for Odell and Single of the Year for Charlie Rich from both the Country Music Association and the Academy of Country Music. Both Odell and Rich also received Grammy Awards for Behind Closed Doors as Best Country Song and Best Country Vocal Performance by a Male. Oh, and apparently Behind Closed Doors ranks as number nine in CMT's 100 greatest songs in country music. Clearly, 1973 was a banner year for Charlie Rich, thanks to this signature tune. Now, over the course of CeCe's Vinyl Closet, I've listened to a lot of diverse male singers, and Charlie's voice was genuinely new to my ears. He had a very smooth vocal style on this record, a bit of a crooner, and in my opinion, what sets his voice apart from all those others was his ability to infuse his music with elements from various genres. He seems to have effortlessly incorporated jazz and blues influences into his songs, creating a distinctive and sophisticated sound that appealed to broad audiences. Back to this 1973 record, another highlight song for me came from The Most Beautiful Girl, written by Billy Sherrill, Nora Wilson, and Rory Burke. This countrypolitan ballad also reached number one in 1973 on three Billboard music charts, including pop, country, and adult contemporary, and again proved Charlie's versatility could allow him to cross over into the pop charts and gaining international fame and recognition. Hey, did you happen to see the most beautiful girl in the world? And if you did, was she crying, crying? Hey, if you happen to see the most beautiful girl then walk down on me, tell her I'm sorry, tell her I need my baby, oh, won't you tell her I love her. And it would be criminal, not to mention several other notable tracks on this record, including all of side one, pretty much. If You Wouldn't Be My Lady was sweet, as was A Sunday Kind of Woman and Peace, Peace on You. All are reasons I enjoyed this album and would certainly enjoy having this record on a road trip. This is great road trip music. Speaking of fame and international recognition and crossover appeal, I was gobsmacked to find how many times Charlie Rich came up within all of my old 1970s retro country music magazines. It seems there was a time that he really dominated the country music scene, showing up all over the pages of these magazines, at all of these big awards events, and even touring with my favorite Olivia Newton-John upon her arrival to America and for her first tour. All of this is why I'm so glad that I finally got familiar with his work. And even though I currently only have this one record, I'm certainly going to be seeking out more from The Silver Fox. And I implore people out there to listen to this album for yourself. I promise that you'll enjoy all of the tracks it has to offer. Despite his success, I've read that Charlie Rich remained a modest and reserved individual, often shying away from the spotlight, he was admired by his peers in the music industry, and he remains a significant influence on subsequent generations of country and crossover artists. This essentially wraps up my thoughts for today. What about you guys? 
Drop me your comments below. I thank you so much for tuning in. Please hit that like and subscribe button and stay tuned for next week's installment of CC's Vinyl Closet. Until then, take care of you and take sweet comfort in the music.